Welcome into Longhorn Extra, everyone. I'm Jane Slater. Big game over at the Dish, but it was Pro Day over at the Bubble Wednesday. Coming up, we'll have Marcus Johnson swing by to talk about his blazing time and the standout performance. But back to baseball. Texas gets a chance to hit the reset button Thursday as conference play begins. It's been a rough season to date, one of their worst starts in the history of the baseball program. But now a new season begins. First up in conference play, number six, TCU. Well, Big Monday saw a monster effort from the Horns as they were three points away from upsetting the third-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. In fact, Texas led the team for 34 minutes and 57 seconds while holding OU to a season-low 63 points on 40% field goal shooting. So if you think Texas is dwelling on the missed opportunity, you'd be wrong. Instead, Shaka Smart is accentuating the positives. Texas would love to win a Big 12 championship in their first year under Shaka. Where is this team going to have to improve if they want that sort of hardware to bring home? And what's the mood over there this morning? Well, I can tell you, Alex, I was here last year, and of course it was Charlie Strong's first signing class, and people were patient around here, but there was a mood of uncertainty. I will tell you the mood here today is one of excitement and confidence. I'm right over here by the fax machine, and all the coaches are now off the field, off of that early morning practice, where, of course, got people going because it was chilly out there. They're all huddled up in the hallway waiting for those first faxes to come in with those LOIs. I did see the one guy that was really hovering around that fax machine was Brick Haley. Of course, he's looking for those defensive tackles this year. Now they're still using the facts. They tried to last year allow those to come in via email, but the NCAA didn't like the way those signatures were coming in. So back to the old reliable fax machine. Now if they send in those faxes at 659, they are null and void. They aren't able to process them until 701. So as soon as we get that information, we'll let you know. We've got a big board behind us. They're bringing in the names. They're going to put them back up there. And when you hear this sound be a sound coming up. It'll let you know that we've got a signing day alert and the guys will immediately get it down to me. I'll be able to tell you who the guys are coming in and that'll allow them to break it down. Now I did ask the coaching staff, what did Tuesday look like for you guys ahead of this one? They said, you know what? We went down the list of every single guy, guys that we knew that had committed early on and guys that we knew were on the fence. We wanted to make sure that they were confident about their decision. Their parents knew how to fill out the paperwork and how to work out the fax machine. We wanted to make sure that there were no hiccups. Bailey, you're going to be standing by throughout the day on social media, seeing what people are buzzing about Texas. What do you got for us? Well, the cold has already set in here at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. That will be one of the storylines of the game as they are predicting temps hovering around 39 degrees for the 630 kick Saturday. By the half, the wind chill will have it feeling like 32 degrees. But a bit of good news. Looks like the snow will hold off Saturday night. Forecasters say it will come in Sunday, but the team should be back on the charter headed for Austin by then. Snow or no snow, it will be the coldest game the Corns have played yet. I talked with equipment managers today, and they say their goal of the game is to make sure the players feel comfortable, which will include things like hand warmers, heavy jackets, and even heated benches. As for sleeves, Duke Thomas told us he won't be wearing them. Says the weather doesn't affect him. We will see about that tomorrow. Texas's record in games below 50 since 2011 is one and one with a loss to Baylor and win at Kansas. Aside from being the Cowboys home finale, it's their senior night. 19 players being honored pregame, but talk to school officials and they tell me they're not expecting a full house because of the weather. Enjoy the warmth of the studio, guys. We'll have more updates from Stillwater on Texas game day. One of the biggest guys in all of college football at tight end, Laquan McGowan. He's going to catch the rock, too, perhaps. Two catches, two touchdowns this season. That's quite the effective ratio. Here's Jane Slater with more on the big boy. Hey, Lowell, one football. It's not every day that you see a 400-pound guy haul in a touchdown. In fact, most of the guys that see the end zone are about half that size. But Art Browles and Baylor have been successful turning a 6'7", 410-pound offensive lineman into a tight end who has three catches for three touchdowns in his career. And when you're that big, you got to have some pretty big skis to stand on. I got Baylor to bring me his shoe. Check this out. Size 20, the closest size at Texas is Tristan Nicholson at a size 18. You know, I asked offensive lineman Taylor Doyle and tight end Alex De La Torre about that transition, and both of them said they were at all. They quite simply don't know how he did it, but he has, and the experiment has proved fairly successful. When we come back on Texas game day, we're going to talk about another experiment, Chris Warren III against Texas Tech and what he said after the game. Stay with us. You know who would be even better than all of us? The guy that Jane Slater is with right now the big guy. 
All right, all right. I got Matthew McConaughey here. here I know this is good ahead of uh, conference play that we've got you on the sidelines. You're a guy that's full of energy. What do you think about the energy surrounding this team right now? Well, the way we finished last game, I know it's been a good week of practice. Big confidence booster. You know, not just the game, but mainly that fourth quarter last week against Cal. Confidence means so much, man, for these young men, 18 to 22 years old. I think the defense will step up a little bit more because they know the offense is going to have a better chance of moving the ball. And we'll get out there and see, man. I mean, we, we, we got our first conference game here at Oklahoma State. Let's, they're at home. They're in our house. Hopefully the crowd will remind them and let them know they're in our house tonight. And take the pride and go go to the victory. But I think it's going to be a damn good game, but I look for us to win tonight. That one's yours. That one's yours. Oh, God. All right, guys, I'm giving each one of you one minute for this, all right? All right. So let me know when both of y'all are ready for it. All right. We'll not start. yet. Come on, Casey. Not yet. I got to start the clock. What are we doing here? You guys ready? Let's roll. All right, start the clock. One minute. Come on, just stop with that right now. <laughs> that looks like a planner's peanut, Casey. <laughs> peanut head. Peanut head. 30 seconds now, guys. All right, I see what you're doing there, Ahmad. Nice job. You're already come. You, you know you've still got extra time. I don't wow. need it. <laughs> I don't need it. Okay, you guys don't need it. You're both, done with your, you're both done with it. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can turn your board a little bit for our cameras. Oh, my. Now, Casey, what did I ask you to draw? Uh, you told me to draw a mod, and I got a uh, Mr. Peanut head. So I drew the peanut with the little arms and little bird legs, and that's a mod right there. Right. Peanut head. It looks like a planter's peanut. All right, Ahmad, who did I have you draw? He was focused on peanuts. I was focused on bellies. <laughs> this big thing right here is the big target right here. Yeah, uh, I don't have red hair, though. Yeah, the, the red beard, it was a little, it's it's kind of reddish. So I'm uh, red beard and a little red hair. I think I won this competition, though. That doesn't look anything like me. Nothing. You are a peanut head. <laughs> And that's Spider's Peanut. He just, that he just had a kid. He's got a little boy now, so I think he's reading a lot of children's books because it looks very Apparently, cartoonish yes. in the depiction. That's true. That is definitely Guys, true. thank you so much for playing. This has been a lot of fun. I got some good news. We got the A team back out here on the field. We got Vince Young, Ricky Williams, David Thomas, and Lowell Galindo getting ready to take it away for us. Well, we start this Longhorn Extra with the Longhorns' gentle giant. I'm Jane Slater. This is now former defensive lineman Hassan Ridgeway. Hassan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, we looked at some of that video there. Uh, you decided to forego your final gear at Texas in favor of the draft, which is now a month away on April 28th. Texas Pro Day was two weeks ago. What sort of feedback did you get following your performance? Um, I got good feedback. Uh, said I performed really well in my workouts and at the little couple drills that I did to get better at from the combine. They said I did really well at so. How do you think you did? I think I did good. I came out there. Uh, Ready to show people that uh, people say I had a little slow time at the combine with like all the linemen. I was like, there's no way. So to go out there and show them that I'm able to move fast. That was it. Were there any other questions they had about you and how did you address some of those specific concerns? Um, I had a, a I guess, a, a bad uh, bench press at the, the combine. I feel like I had 24 reps. I was like, Obviously, I could do way more than that, but uh, I want to go out there and show basically I'm strong. You can see that on the film, but also when they go out there and they work you out, they can feel that. So, I mean, basically address those two. How does the NFL Combine differ from Pro Day? Do you feel a little bit more comfortable at home in front of your teammates and former teammates? Oh, it's uh, it's completely different when you got, I say I was working out with Tank and Shiro and you got Duke, the Jay. I mean, everybody, when you have your your teammates like that right there with you, it's a little, it's a whole lot different than at the combine. I mean, it's a different kind of feel. What is the feel like at the combine? Uh, best word I can probably describe it is stressful. All right, well, not part of the combine, the smart car squeeze. Can you tell me what's the story behind this? Oh, my God. Um, well, I think me, Jake, and uh, I think uh, Sid, Sid Flowers, <laughs> one of the old linemen, we were all going to go eat. I didn't have a car at the time. So the only person who had a car on campus was uh, Jake. And so uh, Sid, he's not as you know, flexible as me. And I uh, wasn't able to make it. So 
we had to, I think he brought paper scissors or something to get who he was gonna get in the back. I ended up losing, obviously, so I was in the back seat and I had to, I had to make it. <laughs> that smart car was riding very low to the ground, I can imagine. Oh, it was, it was bad. It was a bad day for me. <laughs> this might be a little weird. Sometimes I just put it on and look in the mirror and just appreciate it, you know. I feel like I didn't appreciate um, a lot of things back in 2012. Heading into the 2012 Olympics in London, Marquise Goodwin was considered one of the favorites in the long jump. A two-time NCAA champion in 2010 and 2012, Goodwin solidified his front-runner status, winning the title in the event at the Olympic trials. In 2012 at London, I want to say he hit the auto mark on his first jump, at which advances you to the next day's final. And there are 12 athletes, and they go down to the final eight. Whole life preparing for that one moment, you know, and um, you know, there's so much energy, so much thought, so much work goes into it. And he knew that he didn't make the, the final three jumps. I mean, he literally fell to his, his elbows and his knees and wouldn't get up. You know, he was just crushed. That was his dream. I was on the ground crying. I saw myself time after time as a little kid, you know, being on that podium, um, being in that position. And, uh, you know, when I finally got the opportunity to make, make the Olympic team and to go on and try to win a gold medal and didn't accomplish it, it was terrible. After the disappointment in London, Goodwin returned his focus to football playing his senior year at Texas before getting drafted by the Buffalo Bills. My rookie year, I was on a, I was on a climb, you know, worked my way up, started a couple games, scored a few touchdowns, got to do my dance in the end zone. Then I dealt with an injury, uh, a little setback, came back second year, um, dealt with some more injuries. And then last year, broke my ribs three times, or three ribs twice. Despite his nagging injuries, Goodwin says he remained committed to football. But with Rio approaching, he says he felt the tug of the track. On June 25, 2015, Goodwin competed for the first time in three years at Nationals in the long jump. Ended up jumping further than I ever had in my whole life. It was great. The Bills have been very, very supportive, especially Coach Ryan. Um, Man, I get chills thinking about it. Uh, never really been around an NFL organization that would support someone, especially that had dealt with injuries like I have, not really been able to produce on the field the past couple years. They really have supported me in my transition to track and field and just really encouraged me a lot to just go ahead and live my life and pursue what it is that I want to, as long as you know. I just don't forget about the bills when football season come around. I've had a few bumps in the road, but I'm getting better each week. Training through it, it's been tough. This is probably the hardest I've trained when it came to track and field. He's a go-getter. He burns himself out working hard, but that's really what sets him apart. He's very um, positive and just a go-getter. I figured like, oh, I'll be here again in 2016, automatic. Not realizing how hard it is to make the team, make any team. Um, so I kind of have to humble myself a little bit. Uh, sometimes I just go look at my uniform, um, things like that. Just help me remember how, how appreciative you should be of the opportunities you get. I compete for Marquise. I don't compete for anybody else. And that's what life is all about. It's not going to be straight line. It's not going to be just here. You know, a lot of people see where you are now and um, don't really think about what it took to get there. You know, even in sports, you know, that's just life. So it's been a beautiful journey, and I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And Marquise will be competing in the 100-meter Invitational today. He won't be competing in the long jump because he's still dealing with some hammy issues. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Jane. Very, very good story indeed.